You ever drive down the road or ride your bike or whatever it is and, 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 a, and an eyelash drops in your eye while, while you're on the road, you know, and it, it just blink and it, pretty soon it's like, ah, 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 you know, really, I mean, it, it, it's horrifying. It's a pain and there's shooting pains and, and, and you're driving, you know, you're in and out of the road and the, the police helicopter is chasing your car because it's thinking you, you're running away from the law or something like that. And then you just, you drive hard, you're driving. Whew. Not a very comfortable feeling, yeah. especially on a bike. Because a bike, I mean, you just want to tap that curb and, you know, on the helmet, wear your helmet. So, same type of thing. Eyelash falls in your eye, spooky, out of control. How do you prepare for something like that? I mean, really, I mean, you ever get out, and go on the road and pluck something out of your, you know, eyelash and go, Tee! you know, it's like, whoo! But, with mathematics, you have a chance to avoid the and the police helicopter and the <laughs> all right, and that's what we're here for. We have a part two on factoring the summer difference of cubes. Now look, I kind of jammed it all together here, so hit pause on, on your on your computer so you can take these notes down if you haven't seen part one or go back to part one. But what I've done is I've rewritten the cube pattern, and and again that's a term that I made up for you not to share with your friends, because they'll laugh at you. Um, but, but if you want to be laughed at and bond in that strange way, you go ahead. But, but the cube pattern, I just called it the cube pattern because it's a pattern we're going to use to help you factor the sum or difference of cubes. And this time you can you do it for a sum or a difference of cubes. When it came to squares, you can only do it for a difference. Um, but for here, if I have a cube plus or a minus another cube, I can factor it and get factor into something times something. In this case, a binomial times another, uh, just times a trinomial. Now, we're learning this lesson as if you've already factored out your common monomial or tried to factor, uh, factor out a common monomial. Remember, if you don't get that factored uh, out and there is a common monomial, it's going to make things a lot tougher. So remember to take out that common monomial. And now you're re reduced to a problem that you look at and you go, well, it's a binomial, so I have one of two choices when it comes to binomial. Either I've got a difference of squares, or I've got a sum or difference of cubes. Now, if I look at this here, I, I could say, well, yeah, n to the 12th, that's a square because that's an even exponent. And n to the 6th, that's a square because that's an even exponent. Go back a couple lessons on, on differences of cubes, sorry, difference of squares, and, and see how that works. But 125 is not a perfect square. You can't take something times itself to get 125, so that's not going to work. Same thing with an 8. So if, if uh, we, we've ruled out that this is a difference of squares. Um, so now the only other option is it could be the difference of cubes. And, and in this case, yep, it's the difference of cubes because 8 is 2 times 2 times 2 and 20, 125 is 5 times 5 times 5. So I, I learned all that because I did step 0, which is read and look. Read said factor. And so I know I need to split this up into something times something. And when I looked at the problem, mathforbreakfast.com to understand step zero, I looked at the problem and I saw that this is a cube because eight is a cube, two times two times two, and m is a cube. Uh, and and let's, let's dig into that. Eight equals two times two times two. And m to the twelfth is equal to m times, uh, m to the fourth times m to the fourth times m to the fourth. These are cubes. All right, cubes. Let me, let me make a u look somewhat like a u. That's cubes. All right, and, and I know because I can take the 12 divided by 3 and I get 4. That's how I got my 4 on each of these. That's all I know that m to the 12th is a cube. All right, and then the same, the same thing is going to apply over here uh, with, the one, with the 125. The uh, 125 is equal to 5 times 5 times 5. How do you know that? You memorize it. I'm sorry, nothing simpler than that. Memorize it. There's a few cubes you want to learn. You know, learn the cubes of 1 through 5, 1 through 6 maybe. Um, so it's 1, 8, 27, 64, 
125, and, and 216. Uh, those are the cubes you might want to use, so memorize those that those are cubes. But again, when you look at the exponent on the variable, you know it's a cube because you can divide by 3. And so now the n to the 6th is equal to n squared times n squared times n squared uh, because 6 divided by 3 equals 2. All right? We use the 4 up there, the 4 up there, the 4 up there. We use the 2 up here, the 2 up here, the 2 up here. So um, these, again, are cubes. That's what I got from looking at the problem. All right? And, and uh, from step one, I'm actually going to apply this to step one. Step one is split the terms into um, uh, cube roots. So you know what? I'm just going to call it split the terms. All right? And so what does that mean here? Well, if I have my 8m to the 12th minus my 125n to the 6th, I split up the 8 into 2, uh, sorry, that's a 2, uh, 2m to the 4th times 2m to the 4th times 2m to the 4th. Split that up, right? The 8 splits up into 2 times 2 times 2, 2, 2, 2 m to the 12th splits up into m to the 4th, m to the 4th, m to the 4th. Blah, 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 blah. Not so easy on the tongue. Um, m to the 4th, m to the 4th. So here we go. I've got my, what we would call cube roots. This is the cube root, because this times itself, three times, gets me back to the original expression. And this would be 5n five five to the 2nd times 5n to the 2nd times 5n to the 2nd. Great. I split each of my cubes into the three, or the one thing, multiplied with itself three times, that would get me back to the original expression. That's great. I'm going to keep those down there, and I'm going to keep my formula up here, and I'm going to do my problem in between. So let's see how that works. I move, I move these items here, I keep going, and I've got that. All right. So I really, once I've done that splitting, I'm pretty much done. I apply the formula and box it up. Let's see how this works. So step two is use the cube for a pattern. You can call it formula two if you want to sound a little more sophisticated. Well, I'll be using the cube formula for that one. And people will step back and be impressed. Ooh, he's got the cube formula. Whatever that is. Um, so I I'm going to take this and, and use my, my cube formula. So. Uh, I, I, the Q formula says if I've got 8m to the 12th minus 125n to the 6th, well, I've done my splitting here, as we saw down below, 2m to the 4th times 2m to the 4th times 2m to the 4th. I split the y's, uh, the, the second term, in, into 5n squared. That's 5n squared. That's 5n squared, and that equals, and let's follow the pattern. The pattern is, parenthesis, parenthesis, uh, well, here it's a cubed, here it's not. So let me take my not. That's my not. And this is my not. So 2m to the fourth. What sign do I put in between them? Well, following the pattern, I use, in this binomial, the same sign as what I had over here. So in this case, the same sign is a minus. And then the b, the b is not cubed. This was cubed here, this is not cubed. So I take my not cubed expression, which is the 5n squared. Okay, well now I need to continue the pattern here. And the pattern says, when I want to write out my trinomial, I take the first term, the not, squared, or the not cubed term, and I square it. So I take the 2m to the fourth, and I square it. So I'm going to put over here sq, and now I get 4m to the 8th. Now, I'm not going to explain that a little bit. You know, uh, I, you know what? Let's, let's do that. I'm going to go over here, make some room here. Pardon me while I make some more room. Squaring it, what does that mean? Well, 2m to the 4th times 2m to the 4th. Something times itself. That's what squaring means. And that's how I got 4. 2 times 2 is 4. And the m to the 8th was m to the 4th times m to the 4th out of the exponents. All right, following my pattern, I know that 
the next sign is going to be the opposite of this sign here. So I go and I make it the opposite. Opposite. So now I put a plus. Alright? That's OPP for opposite. Let me emphasize that. OPP. -P. Opposite. Alright? So uh, that's great. But the middle term is the product of the not squared A, or the not cubed A, and the not cubed B. So this is my not cubed times my not cubed. Well, let's just multiply those together. 2 times 5 is 10, m to the fourth, n to the second. And again, I got this. This is my product. I'm going to put prod right there. And that was my 2m to the fourth times my 5n squared. That's how I got to 10m to the fourth n squared. Okay? Now I'm going to do a little more racing here. My apologies. I erase the formula as I use the formula. Uh, the final step here, the last sign is always a plus. So I'm going to put here always. Alright, always a plus. And then my last term is a square again. And what do I square this time? Well, I take this guy, and I'm going to put a big arrow here so you can not get too jumbled up. And I square it to get 25n to the fourth. And again, how did that work? Well, uh, 5n squared times 5n squared. That's what a squaring means. Multiply times itself is how I got 25n to the fourth. And um, I'm done. You thought, it, you thought there'd be more hopping and skipping and, you know, twist? No. I followed my pattern. Took this Q terms, split them out. I don't even have to speak anymore. I can just tap from now on. I've got them split. Now these become my tools. I put one of them over here to follow the pattern. Keep the sign, both minuses. And I put one of these guys over here to follow the pattern. It was cubed before, now they're not cubed. Were cubed before, now they're not cubed. Then I follow the pattern, square, product, square. Got it? In your mind, memorize that. Square, product, square. Square what? The first guy that was here. Becomes 4m to the 8th. Product? Product of what? The two people that are here. Because these are people now. Never really saw a person looking like a 5n squared, but they're things that want to be multiplied, so you put it multiplied, 2 times 5 is 10, m to the 4th times n squared, m to the 4th times n, that's it. Now this sign is the opposite of this sign, part of your pattern. And then finally, um, plus, because it's always plus. Again, it's a memorization thing, I apologize. When it comes to memorization, memorization it's kind of a bummer to have to memorize, um, but pretty simple formula. Again, if you practice it a few times, always a plus, and then square. Square what? The last guy of this binomial. So square it, boom. Multiply it, product, boom. Square it, put it at the end. Square, product, square. Keep the sign, opposite sign, always a plus. All right? Now, what do I recommend when you do these problems, when you're factoring the sum or difference of cubes, I recommend that you always write the cube pattern down. And you repeat it to yourself. And you might even want to repeat it out loud. Not kidding. Repeat it out loud by yourself. Turn up the volume of the music so people don't notice. But repeat it so it helps sink it in. All right? Then use it, practice it, repeat it over and over, and it will build and it will motivate you to do some more of these. Because really, who wouldn't want to do another cube problem? That's it for uh, factoring the summer difference of cubes, at least from MathForBreakfast.com. One more factoring lesson. I highly recommend you go to it because it's about two minutes long and you will learn a world of information.